Thank you very much. The next item of business is a member's business debate on motion 14162 in the name of Jamie Halcrow Johnson on regulation of electricians as a profession. The debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Can I ask those members who wish to speak in the debate to press the request to speak buttons now? And I call on Mr. Halcrow Johnson to open the debate. Mr. Halcrow Johnson. Thank you very much, Deputy Presiding Officer. I'm grateful to have the opportunity today to raise an issue that is of importance to every home and business in Scotland. Virtually all premises across the length and breadth of the country, whether on or off grid, have some sort, uh, some form of electrical installation. It's ultimately to them, the body of consumers, that I would ask members to consider today. First, can I thank, uh, extend my thanks to all the members from across all the political parties in this uh, parliament who have signed my motion and to the organisations who have taken time to meet with me over the recent months. And can I also thank all those people within the, within the industry who have been in touch and to the many who are in the gallery today. Electricity and the installation and maintenance of its supply must be handled with extreme caution. In many cases, it seems electrical products are more regulated than electrical insulation work they utilise. Yet the consequences of poor work can be severe, damage to property, injury, and occasionally even death. I was staggered, as have many colleagues across this chamber, to learn that people who enter our homes and businesses to install and maintain our wiring, our fuse boxes and appliances, need have no qualifications at all, and yet they can still call themselves electricians. And I believe that is simply should not be the case. The UK National Contact Point for Professional Qualifications shows 102 different, uh, different professions that have protection of title. Most notable amongst them is the gas industry. We recognise that there are appropriately certified tradesmen able to undertake work on gas installations. The Parliament has extended protection to other roles, for example to door supervisors at bars, nightclubs and events. That is not to say that protection of title will immediately solve every problem. There are, of course, gas boilers still fitted in homes and business premises by people who are not appropriately qualified. However, it must surely be at the core of the measures we can take to create a safe and well-regulated industry. For many years, organisations like Select, formerly the Electrical Contractors Association of Scotland, and the Scottish Joint Industry Board, which includes representatives from Unite the Union, the successor of the former Electricians' Union, have been campaigning for the electrical profession to be recognised and protected. In more recent years, a number of organisations have cooperated with the Scottish Government as part of its working group to bring about changes to the industry and to improve the safety of electrical work, as well as better enabling consumers to make the right choices when it comes to choosing contractors and tradespeople. It is, however, almost three years since this issue was first raised, and not only is there no action towards it, the Scottish Government's position remains ambiguous. It is, of course, right that any approach is well considered before being taken forward. However, this work is already, has already in the main been done. Some have asked about the scale of the problem, a point that has been heard and discussed at some depth. Select and Unite have presented evidence to the working group that suggests as many as 4,000 individuals may be operating in the grey market, undertaking unqualified or underqualified work on electrical installations. They fully recognise that this figure, however, comes with caveats. The truth is that it's almost impossible to come to bring, uh, to, impossible to come to bring forward conclusive statistics. Few individuals faced with the question will be, will be willing to raise their heads and enthusiastically them, declare themselves as unqualified. Uh, of course. Neil Finlay. Um, does he agree with me that um, the areas that he has just identified are a huge issue, but also that there should not be any moves within the industry to downgrade the role of an electrician? Mr. Halker Johnson. I certainly wouldn't. I think there is a lot more, just from, from um, the, the uh, motion that's been put forward today, there's a lot more conversations that need to be have, had after to make sure that all areas like that are encompassed with any legislation that does go forward. Um, and as the greatest prevalence of poor and unsafe work is found uh, in the uh, domestic market, in people's homes, there are other challenges too. For most, commissioning electrical work is not a frequent exercise. We know that many are not familiar with the industry or the existing bodies that operate within it. Whilst most expect a qualified electrician to arrive, we know that that's not always what happens. Members of the public in general assume that the title of an electrician comes with its protections. When presented with evidence that it, is, that it isn't, the vast majority, 93% in select survey, back regulation to assure only people with relevant qualifications can advertise their services as an electrician. A further 89% wanted more information on how to check that an electrician is qualified. But of course, what is central to this debate is safety. What are the consequences of poor electrical work? 
In 2016, there were 619 casualties and 10 people killed in electrical fault-related incidents across the United Kingdom. Figures in Scotland may be pr proportionately less, but that seems like little excuse when faced with calls for action to avoid this harm. We also know that many faults are latent, that they can lie in wait for months or even years before a combination of circumstances cause injury to a person or damage to property. There are a number of possible approaches to protection of title, with, uh, with which I have no doubt ministers will be familiar, uh, familiar. Some have proposed an extension of the Joint Industry Board, with its membership opened up further to coordinate this. Others have suggested that the existing certification register of construction, which has existed for some time on a voluntary brace, basis, could be modified and have its remit expanded. All of the organizations I have spoken with have emphasized that keeping costs minimal, keeping the solution simple, and maintaining a light touch with business and electricians are key in their considerations. Enf enforcement will also be a concern. We should not introduce a regulatory framework, then allow it to be ignored. So too, long, uh, so, so too will be enduring that con that, uh, ensuring that continuing qualifications are recognized. Electrical work is evolving, and we must avoid the suggestion that protected title is a substitute for ensuring qualifications are up to date, or indeed that specialist work should be only undertaken by those with specialist qualifications. The professional bodies that exist already demonstrate good practice and promote high standards of training amongst their member firms. That model should be embraced as part of any recognition and certification program. These issues are not beyond the wit of this parliament to thrash out. However, the, parliament that's, the, the question that still remains is simple, whether there exists within the Scottish Government the political will to make that happen. As I mentioned previously, many of these issues have already been heard within the government's working group. However, I'm far from alone in thinking that this process has dragged on for too long. There seems to have been a broad acceptance after Select Commission its own legal advice that this parliament has the powers to act. Unfortunately, the momentum for, measure, uh, for, momentum for measures to improve safety is sometimes only found after incidents make it clear that they can no longer be ignored. I would hope that we collectively can begin to take, begin to take forward action now. Deputy Presiding Officer, I feel that protection of title is a necessary component of ensuring safety in the electrical industry, but I recognize too that this will not be a silver bullet. NIC EIC have, uh, have, for example, emphasized the importance of raising awareness amongst domestic customers and some of the ways that they've been working with organizations to achieve this. That is a process that I fully support. What I'm seeking today is a sign that after almost three years of discussion, the protection of title is seriously being considered by ministers in line with the wide support that's, that such a move would have. Many thanks. Thank you very much. Open debate speeches of four minutes. Claire Adamson, followed by Alexander Burnett. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I thank Jamie Halco Johnson for securing this important debate this afternoon? Um, that being said, I haven't actually signed the motion because from my work in this area as, as the convener of the Cross-Party Group of Accident Prevention Safety Awareness and my discussions in the industry, um, I feel that there, there isn't a con consensus yet as to how the best way forward is to achieve consumer confidence. And, and that is the most important thing here, is that when people contract out and, and engage someone who describes themselves as an electrician, that the customer can be fully sure that they are qualified and safe to be undertaking the work in that area. In that being said, I absolutely recognise the commitment to safety, both of Select and Mr Johnson, and how important that is going forward. Um, we talked about some of the, the issues of um, what can go wrong with electrical safety, and this is really important, not just for people in their own homes and social landlords, but one only has to look at some of the testimonies on the Families Against Corporate Killing website and see um, people who have been um, killed or seriously injured at work as a result of electric, um, electricity um, in installations not being safe in the working practice. Um, and it, it's, it's really something that for many of us we take for granted. Our electricity is there, it's on demand. When something goes wrong with it, we all feel the, feel the issues. But sometimes I, I feel that we don't, as consumers, uh, understand how important it is to ensure the safety. Yes. Neil Finlay. I wonder, and I ask this in all sincerity, what, um, if she could help us about who is not um, on board with the proposal to regulate the industry. I, I don't think it's a case of, of regulating the industry. I think it's about achieving consensus about the best way to do that. And that's why I didn't sign it, because you know, I recognise the, the calls for, for, for the particular uh, mechanism that Mr Halcrow 
Johnson has called for, but the consensus I don't feel is there. It's not about not regulating, it's about getting to, to, that, to that consensus. Um, I welcome the work of the government's electrical working group and I'm sure that the minister will have much to say about the work that has been completed over the last three years. Um, I, and I know that one of the, the barriers to some of these issues can sometimes be the perception of what um, the burden of paperwork and red tape that will be placed on small electrical companies and small individual electricians. And that's often seen as an administrative barrier to achieving this. But earlier this year, I was invited to open and participate in the Institution of Gas Engineers and Managers uh, conference in Edinburgh. And I saw a presentation there from um, Stuart Davidson's of Gas Tag. Um, and he had taken the gas safety register, which all gas engineers have, and that's another mechanism that could be looked at to achieve that consumer confidence that is so important. Um, and, and basically, it was, a, it was an online app, and the, the um, gas appliance was tagged in a home and in an area, and it was read with a Q, QR reader by the gas engineer undertaking the work. Um, that made a lot of the um, paperwork that's normally associated with filling out the address, what time, what was done. It could all be recorded on the app at the time and photographs taken to prove that the, the engineer had completed the work to a satisfactory level. And that was being rolled out along uh, across social landlords. And I just give that as a, by way of an example of how technology can help us and um, improve our ability to um, secure that consumer confidence and that safety, which is what we're all here um, for today. Um, and I, I, I just thought that that was interesting. We are moving into the internet of things. The world is changing, sensor technology. Indeed, you know, the ability for uh, uh, an installation or a, a fuse box to tell an engineer that something has gone wrong and it needs service. All these things are, are of the future and things that could be used to improve this situation. But I do welcome the opportunity to speak about it today and I look forward to the Minister's update. Thank you very much. And I call Alexander Burnett, to be followed by Monica Lennon. Mr Burnett, uh, please. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And can I also add my thanks to Jamie Halker Johnston for bringing this important topic to the debating chamber and to those members across the chamber that were able to support the motion. Now, in a time when consumers are always looking to research a product or service before purchasing, regulation is welcome to many across Scotland. And I've previously spoken in the chamber, putting my support behind apprenticeships. I believe that the regulation of electricians as a profession would improve opportunities for apprentices as it would offer a wider and more comprehensive learning than some of the more specific electrical roles that have been proposed. And I'll quickly note members to my register of interest as an employer of apprentices in the construction industry. But I make this point as we have all recognized the benefit that apprentices bring to business. Now Select and SJIB have noted that the status quo of unqualified electricians is undermining individuals and companies who invest in apprentice and staff training and innovation. Therefore, to have this accreditation for people entering the profession would not only be a huge benefit to them as individuals, but would also help businesses encourage in fresh talent. Now, with everything moving towards electrification as part of our push to prevent climate change, we are seeing many more things from our transport to our homes moving to electric. So with this increased use of electric products, we will require more electricians, and we need to do all we can to encourage people into the profession. Now, as members across the chamber have noted, unions, businesses and charities alike all support the principle of regulating electricians as a profession. And I note electrical safety first point that more research is required on the potential benefits of protection of title in consultation with all parts of the electrical industry. Unite also mentioned that their members raised their concerns and frustration that people who have not met the established national and industry standards are able to use with impunity the title of electrician, and therefore would also welcome the protection of this title. The privilege of calling yourself an electrician should be limited to those who are qualified at this highly skilled profession. And not only will this prevent rogue traders from carrying out electrical work that could be unsafe, but it could also help reduce cost to the consumer by preventing further repairs required on shoddy work. Because currently, the overall cost of faulty electrical work in Scotland is around £120 million every year. And that doesn't even include the cost of major incidents. So consumer confidence is important, and I would be keen to see that regulation does not become a weak form of accreditation. So I therefore back calls to ensure that there is a continuous assessment of the competence of a registered electrician. 
And with that, I would be keen to see a campaign to raise awareness to residents across Scotland of identifying and using registered electricians. This is an important step in improving consumer confidence and helping the industry reduce the number of rogue traders used. Regulation should be there to protect consumers, but most importantly, we must support electricians who are already carrying out work safely and properly. I therefore support this motion with the added caveat that we must work with the industry to develop a robust system of regulation. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I call Monica Lennon to be followed by Tom Arthur. Ms. Lennon, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and thank you, just, just bear with me a minute. I'm sorry, I've just noted there was some clapping in the gallery now. Um, I understand why people want to clap in the gallery, but it's not allowed in the Scottish Parliament. Thank you very much. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and thank you to Jamie Halcrow Johnson for bringing forward this important debate. This follows a determined campaign by organisations representing both employers and employees, like Select, Unite the Union, the National Inspection Council for Electrical Installation Contracting and Electrical Safety First, um, to secure official legal recognition of qualified and competent electricians in the interest of public safety. Uh, as the convener of the cross-party group on construction, this is an issue that I've uh, come to, to learn about and feel passionately about, um, so I'm glad to be taking part in the debate today. Because whether in the home or in the workplace, people deserve to be safe. Like 93% of the Scottish households are surveyed by Select, I expected any person claiming to be an electrician uh, to have training and achieved qualifications. It is staggering that in effect anyone can call themselves an electrician and undertake work they're not qualified to do. This puts everyone at risk. Badly installed or maintained electrical work creates a significant risk of fire and other risks such as electrical shocks. And government statistics show that 69% of all accidental fires in Scottish homes are caused by electricity. These safety risks may lie dormant for months or even years. These silent killers can strike at any time. It only needs a set of circumstances to combine to trigger it. An unregulated electrici el electrician sector makes it more difficult to hold rogue traders accountable. And people are left to foot the bill of correcting unsafe electrical works. Now, I'm the daughter of a health and safety officer, so I don't really need to be convinced of the health and safety case for regulating electricians as a profession. And I, I listened to the remarks from, from Claire Adamson about concerns by, by some in industry about the, the burden of bureaucracy. And I'm reminding of the, the saying that we're here to remember the dead and to fight for the living. Good employers who work with trade unions uh, to improve health and safety don't see that as a burden. It's about people's human rights. And too many people have died in workplaces for us to be complacent and allow conversations to drift on. Scotland has world-class roots. I'll take the intervention. Claire Adamson. Taking the intervention. Just, just to be absolutely clear, um, it, it's not the, the, that I think any of the paperwork would be unnecessary. I'm just, I was just pointing out that there are other ways of of recording and achieving things that are cheaper and easier to do now. It wasn't a suggestion at all that there should be any um, a diminution of the health and safety aspect of what should be happening in there. Indeed, the cross-party group and Action Regent have discussed this on many occasions, and I invite both members to come along and hear some of the testimonies at that regarding this very issue. Monica Lennon. I'd be happy to do so, and I think people should feel reassured because regulation of professions is commonplace in the UK. For example, I'm a chartered town planner. That's a protected title. There are more than 100 regulated professions already, and yet there is no protection afforded to electricians. Um, regulation can spread best practice and facilitate ongoing training. These are good things. And this will become of critical importance when the new 18th edition of the writing regulations comes into, or wiring, sorry, wiring regulations comes into force in January next year. They raise standards markedly and introduce new and more complex technical requirements to ensure safety. Regulations will ensure that electricians are properly qualified to meet these higher standards and assist with training. In conclusion, presiding officer, I join the many organisations in the sector to call on the Scottish Government to 
to not delay and to use its powers to impose protection of title for electricians. There is a clear case for this and Scotland can lead the way in the UK on this issue and in doing so help ensure that people in Scotland are kept safe and skilled workers are properly recognised for the vital job that they do. Thank you. Thank you very much. I now call Tom Arthur to be followed by Neil Finlay. Mr Arthur, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'd like to begin by congratulating Jamie Halcrow Johnson on securing this important debate. Uh, my sentiments are similar to my colleague Claire Adamson, but I'm absolutely behind the um, sentiments and motivation for regulation. And I think what hopefully this debate can contribute to is it's working towards a consensus about the best model. And I agree absolutely with Alexander Burnett that that has to be one developed with industry so that we ensure while there are no corners cut, that every aspect of health and safety is given proper attention to and enforced, that we find the most efficient method at all, particularly for many electricians and small businesses and those who are self-employed. Oh, certainly. Monica Lennon. I hope the member will indulge me as in, in, in the best possible spirit, but I'm quite surprised to hear the arguments about bureaucracy and regulation and concerns, because you know, traditionally we would get that from the Tory benches. Um, is there a bit of role reversal going on, uh, Mr. Uh, and I forgot his name. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Tom Arthur. I, I, I was about to help you, but you gracefully recalled at the right moment. Mr Arthur. I can assure absolutely not. Uh, but simply what I mean is, uh, what I'm stating, as my colleague Claire Adamson has, is I want to make sure we get the best method and model possible. That's it. I completely agree with the principles um, that are, have been set out. I think they are long overdue. Um, and I will come to why I think so in, in a moment. But I do want to be absolutely clear. I simply, my remarks were about finding the best method possible, but that cannot uh, come at the price of compromise in regards to robustness and integrity that is required to inspire confidence amongst consumers. So I hope that clears any misunderstanding that Monica Lennon may have on this matter. Um, I should, for an officer, declare an interest. I have had the opportunity to engage in conversations with Select over a number of years. I'm looking forward to meeting with Select again next month. Um, and I should also declare the inter an interest as the son of an electrician. My father um, started off his career as an electrician um, in the late 60s before going on to become an electrical engineer, then an operational manager. And health and safety was a, it was a very different era back in the 60s. Um, being the solitary operator on a cherry picker and high winds in the district lighting is not something that would necessarily be tolerated today. However, I learned from my father from a very young age to have a great respect and understanding for electricity and the dangers that it presents. Um, and I was always shocked um, if I engaged with friends or colleagues who perhaps weren't aware of how dangerous it can be. And the point that um, Mr Burnett made with regards to the increasing proliferation of electronic goods I think is a well-made one. And I think the point that Jamie Halcrow Johnson made is that electronic goods are more regulated than electronic insula electrical insulation, again, is a very key point indeed. Now, I think that another, some other key points that were um, highlighted in the motion, um, that we over 100 um, regulated professions that already exist, gas engineers, I think members of the public, consumers have a clear understanding of the dangers posed by gas, and they would not want to be um, uh, subject to, uh, we would not want their property or their premises being subject to work carried out by someone who is not a regulated gas engineer. That's clearly understandable. And I do to a point where I think that part of um, our aims and objectives should be not just about the regulation of the profession, but inspiring greater consumer confidence and understanding. I too was shocked by the statistics um, to read uh, that for the overwhelming majority of people, they would not be able to discern whether or not someone was a qualified electrical installer. And to give one example, um, uh, in, in my own experience, um, a, a decade ago, my parents had a new bathroom installed and the work carried out by the electrician was absolutely appalling. Not only was it a case of cables not being tidily ordered, the cable to the shower, the, one of the highest drawing appliances in the house, was completely the wrong type of cable, posing a grave fire hazard. Fortunately, in my household, my parents' household, my father was able to identify that and go through the installer like it was a salt. But not every household has that opportunity, and it is a genuine concern for me, having seen the publication at Select Reduced, where they have many photos illustrating some of the appalling 
installations that have been carried out right across Scotland. That is a clear and grave concern. So I'm conscious that I'm of an overtime presiding officer and I do not want to try your patience. So in concluding, I would simply want to say that I very much welcome this debate. I am glad that Jamie Halcrow Johnson has brought it forward. I think this is an area we have to consider carefully, but in terms of the principles and motivations behind it, I'm fully supportive and I very much look forward to hearing what the Minister has to say in closing. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr Arthur. I have to say I'm quite relaxed today, so you weren't really trying my patience at all. It's a rare moment. I call Mr Finlay and then it will be the Minister. Neil Finlay, please. Is this the new you, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer? <laughs> Good. Uh, I'll see how long that lasts. Um, uh, it's just to... ended. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, uh, first of all, can I declare an interest as a member of uh, Unite the Union? Um, a few uh, uh, years, of, indeed it might have just been a few months after entering this parliament, I campaigned uh, extensively against the proposal by the big electrical companies who were trying to rip up national uh, agreements for electricians and other trades like ventilation engineers. And uh, they were attempting at that time to de-skill the role of an electrician wanting to bring in new uh, grades that would have downgraded the role of an electrician. I work, uh, worked extensively at that time with uh, Unite the Union and with Select uh, and uh, rank and file uh, members of Unite who were working on building sites across the UK. And that was a UK wide campaign uh, a very effective campaign that defeated the proposal that was being brought forward by uh, very large and very uh, powerful construction companies. And it was a good example of uh, parliamentary and extra parliamentary campaigning delivering uh, success. And the big unions were sent off uh, to think again with their tail between their legs. And that's the same uh, big companies that were uh, behind, or some of the same big companies that were behind the blacklisting scandal that sought to target health and safety reps on building sites, the same organisations. Now, uh, President Officer, I'm a, a bricklayer to trade, and of course bricklayers are the cream of the construction industry. But we always support the other trades in the sector because each trade relies on each other trade. And that is part of the team that works in construction, part of the ethos of the team that works in construction. And the electricians are, of course, a very important trade because if you hammer a nail in the wrong way or if you lay a brick upside down you generally won't kill or injure anyone or cause a fire or an electrical shock but poor wiring uh, insulation or earthing can and that is a huge uh, difference indeed I know recently that an electrician was uh, caused harm by a shock in this building very recently and that should be of concern uh, to us. So I think the proposal that's came forward in uh, uh, Mr. Halker Johnson's excellent motion uh, is absolutely sensible and a, a, a very, um, I think, just a normal way forward. That why we've not done it before is the question I think we would be asking. Because this is about safety, it's about consumer protection, it's about building standards, it's about pro professional regulation and professional title. It's it's remarkable that we have that list of other trades or, or organ, uh, uh, um, uh, professions that people have mentioned, a hundred others, art therapists, taxi drivers, street sweepers, who are all licensed in some way, but not electricians. It just, it just doesn't add up. Um, there's not a political point to be made on this, none at all. It's a practical and sensible uh, uh, step, and it, it fits in with the preventative agenda that governments all supposed to be about. And you know this, there's nothing to stop us doing it here. It's no anybody else's responsibility. It's no UK government. It's no the council. It's no somebody in Wales or whoever the usual list is. We can do it here and we should act. And this is about protecting people and consumers. It's about protecting our buildings and the integrity of the trades. And I have to say the best way for safety to become the default position in the industry is for there to be regulation, for there to be protection of title, and for there to be trade union collective agreements, and that they become the norm in the industry, because unionised workplaces are safer workplaces. Workplaces where you have more direct employment are safer workplaces. We've seen what deregulation and the over-reliance on subcontracted labour 
brings and it is more death and more injury in the workplace. So let's bring forward the necessary legislation. I think it would have widespread community support. I think it would have industry support. It would have trade union support. And I hope it would have a majority in this parliament. Thank you very much. And I now call Jamie Hebburn to close for the government. Minister, please. Well, thank you very much, uh, President Officer. Can I uh, join with others as well in uh, thanking Jamie Halker Johnson for bringing forward what I do recognise as uh, an important debate. It is right that we have this issue uh, before the Chamber, and it's, it's something that we should all be able to uh, welcome, that we can uh, contribute to what is uh, an important uh, uh, issue. Um, clearly, uh, everyone in this Chamber, most people out there across Scotland will have, uh, at some stage, have had to hire someone to carry out electoral work and I think we would all agree that we should be able to do so with confidence that we won't be put at risk uh, when we do so. Uh, at the outset I think it's important of course uh, presiding officer to to be emphasised the point uh, that it uh, was uh, made by um, Alexander Burnett about the quality of training we have through our modern apprenticeship uh, scheme uh, that's come around through um, uh, the quality of uh, provision of training we have through uh, industry involvement, through colleges, and of course uh, through uh, the Scottish Joint Industry uh, Board for uh, ele the electrical contracting uh, industry. So I, I think at the outset we should recognise that those electricians we have out there um, are in the main uh, coming from a background of having had uh, high quality uh, professional uh, training. We have of course though heard uh, today and before of the concern that sometimes uh, that there are circumstances that people uh, could be put in danger uh, of uh, electroshocks uh, or uh, fire, uh, perhaps because uh, anyone can call themselves an electrician without uh, relevant qualifications or competency, competency. That is a serious concern uh, and that is something which has to be considered uh, fully and acted upon uh, where uh, necessary. Uh, let me say, I, I noticed uh, uh, earlier today uh, that uh, Mr Huckle Johnson has uh, said he may be considering taking forward legislation on uh, this uh, issue. Uh, in that respect, I should say uh, again at the outset of this uh, debate, I'm open-minded on this matter now. I have no uh, clear or firm decision on the best way uh, forward, but let me make very clear I have not ruled uh, anything out. Uh, and in, uh, in that sense, uh, I was, uh, having come into this post in June, very happy to meet with Select only a matter of weeks later to discuss this very issue. And the proposal, I will in, in a second, uh, Mr Finlay, uh, the proposal that uh, they have laid out about the protection of title is a, a serious proposition and one that will, will give full and proper consideration in the uh, process we're taking forward, which I'll lay out in a few moments' time. But yes, I'm happy Neil to Finley. Mr. Finley. if the Minister would um, advise us of what his um, reservations are or what his view is as to you know, why you might not support this? Minister. Well, well let me come to that. Uh, I suppose the point I'm making, it goes back to the point that Tom Arthur is making. I think there was a bit of misunderstanding uh, about this being uh, concerns about uh, over-regulation and the rest of it. The concern here is that we need to uh, look at this matter fully and thoroughly and ensure that all parties that are uh, interested in uh, this matter are involved in that process so that we, any action we take is uh, the correct and proportionate uh, one. And in that uh, sense, um, that's why uh, we have engaged uh, with industry. There are the calls from uh, Select. There have been alternative uh, views set out from uh, elements of uh, those working in uh, the industry uh, as well. And in an attempt to try and bring everyone together so that we can take forward this matter fully and thoroughly. Uh, that's why uh, Keith Brown, when he was uh, in post as the Cabinet Secretary for uh, Economic Jobs and Fair Work, established a Scottish Government <coughs> Electricians Working Group to bring uh, industry and other uh, representatives such as uh, Unite, uh, such as those with responsibility for um, uh, uh, trading standards uh, and so on, bringing them together to discuss this matter uh, fully and thoroughly. Uh, and I'll use today as an ideal opportunity to update Parliament and the group's discussions. But before I, I do that, I'll give way to Mr Burnett. Alexander Burnett. Uh, I thank the Minister for uh, taking the intervention. Uh, as his colleague Tom Arthur 
uh, pointed out, you know, this, this is a, a matter that's been long overdue. Uh, could the Minister give some indication of a timescale when he'd like to see this, this conversation happen? Minister. Well, uh, again, I, I heard this uh, idea that this is a, a, an issue that's long overdue. Now, clearly, the fact that there has been no protection of title put in place before, you could arguably say, well, this is a matter that's long overdue. But I would go back to the point that the group that I have referred to was established less than a year ago, has been meeting, has been undertaking these discussions. I came into this office in June, met select only a few weeks later. We're having this debate now. I think the idea that we're resting on our laurels, this has been kicking around and it's been punted into the long grass, is not one uh, that can be uh, held to be true. Let me make very clear that this is a matter I do uh, think is a serious one and we're not trying to hold up anything at all. I suppose I would just emphasise the point again that I think it is important that in uh, considering any specific proposition, we engage fully and thoroughly in considering what the implications of that might be and what the best way forward will be. I can see Mr. Halcliffe Johnson is itching to intervene, so let me preempt that and say I'll give way. I saw that too. He was preparing I'm, himself. I'm, Mr. Halcliffe Johnson. I'm very grateful the Minister is ahead of me on this one. Can I just ask, do you support the principle of protection of title uh, in this case? Minister. It, let, let me say, and hopefully it's been clear, I'm not unsympathetic to uh, the concept. I, uh, I, uh, I think there is uh, merit in us uh, looking at that as a proposition, considering it thoroughly, and I've made the point already, that is very firmly on the table. Now, I'll be happy to meet with any member who wants to advance that proposition. Let me be as, um, say it as gently as I can, though, President Officer, I've had two written questions from Mr. Halco Johnson on this point. He's laid a motion on uh, the matter which we're debating today. Mr. Finlay has laid a motion before this parliament and I've had two uh, letters in this matter from two elected representatives. I have not been inundated with people in this chamber come to me to talk about the issue. I could see that that is causing some disconcertion. The only the reason I make that point is, and I would hope it would be held, I'm a pretty approachable guy. If people want to come and speak to me about this issue, I am happy to do that. My door is open, and having opened the door, I'll give way to Mr Finlay, who I'm sure will be happy to Mr. walk. Mr Finlay. I, I was not aware that the way that government works is by weight of um, emails, uh, mailbag uh, responses to ministers, parliamentary questions. I could put down 500 parliamentary questions tomorrow. That shouldn't be how we decide whether we do things that are right or wrong. So I think the point the minister makes is, is frankly nonsense. Well, minister. I, wasn't, I wasn't trying to make a nonsensical point, Mr Finlay. I suppose the point I was trying to make was that I have not had a, an overwhelming sense of people coming forward as a priority issue for them. But I've, it is. My door is open and I'm willing to cons uh, consider it and discuss it with people. Mr Finlay would be uh, very welcome to come and speak to me about it as well. Mr. Halker Johnson. Well, you did say you had an open door. I think we're yes, going to have this. Good. Oh, Mr. Halker Johnson. You've made a rod for your own back, Minister. There, sorry, the Minister has made a rod for his own back. Can I just? I mean, obviously, uh, both uh, Neil Findlay and I have put down motions on this, but but you and your previous, oh, sorry, the the Minister and the Minister's um, predecessor in the role have had representation from industry bodies about this for some time. So it's not just a question of uh, what M MSPs have been doing. There has been representatives, representatives from the industry contacting about this for a long time now. Minister. That's right. And I suppose the point is industry isn't speaking with one voice. So we know, for example, at the National Inspection Council for Electrical Installation uh, Contracting, it ha takes a different view. So the point I'm trying to make is that when different views are expressed, it is incumbent on us as a government to sit down, hear those different voices and work out the best way through it. That's the only point I'm making. And if members of this uh, parliament want to be part of that process, the door is uh, open. So uh, we've probably uh, got a little sidetracked there in terms of me opening the door. It does remain open. Um, I had hoped to update uh, the, group, uh, the, the, uh, the parliament uh, a little more in terms of where the group has got to. Let me just make the point. The group is in place. It's continuing to discuss the matter. There is no delay. That work continues. We will come back. We'll have a final proposition. It will then for uh, Parliament to determine whether or not they agree with that proposition. Mr. Halcrow Jones suggested he may bring forward legislation. That is his, as it is indeed any member of this Parliament's prerogative to do so. I'll be happy to consider that if they determine it is necessary to do so. But of course, I take this issue seriously. And I'm actively exploring it with an open mind. Thank you very much. That concludes the debate and I suspend this meeting of Parliament till 2.30.